In today's video, we're looking at how you can improve the layouts of your blog and blog posts and pages in WordPress using the WordPress block editor, showing you some basics and fundamentals on how to sort of take more control over your writing when you're using the block editor. By the way, if you haven't actually used the block editor before and you need an introduction to it for the basics, there's a video linked to in the description below. But I've got this page here, block editor test page. I'm gonna remove this sidebar so we can see more clearly that it simply has some text and image uh, heading in here, some dot points, things that I covered in the previous video, the one I just mentioned, uh, just some bits and pieces. But the way that most websites work is we generally have a structure of columns and rows. Uh, the way that works is simply because at the moment we have a single column with one row, which is the, which is the text, sorry, a single row with one column in it. <laughs> and let's say we want to start splitting things up. Perhaps the, the first thing I wanna do is actually have an image and something here, I can actually, for one, I can hit enter, I can add an image above this text by going to my media library or uploading. And I can right align that image and the text will wrap around it. But sometimes we have an issue where the text goes beyond the image or and we get like a weird effect with the wrap and we're not happy with it. So I'm actually going to make this, turn the alignment off and I'm going to add instead at underneath these two, I'm gonna click the little button, plus button here. I'm gonna add in some columns. And we can add in various columns here. So I'm gonna choose 50, 50 for two columns. And now we have two areas we can put information into. So if I click onto this block and choose these six dots, I can drag that to the right and pop it in that column. I can take this image drag it to the left, into the left column. And now we actually have a column to the left with an image in it and text to the right. And I can actually go through and I can change the width of the column. At the moment, the text is pretty wide, the image is pretty wide, but it should be contained in there. If I click on this, one of these columns, I get this information here. In this column, I can actually align it to the middle vertically or to the bottom vertically, or in this case, I'm just gonna stick it to the top and the same on this one. But if I wanna actually edit the columns themselves, I can use this little box off to the left and I can just keep clicking that until I've selected the whole column block. And if I add this little, click this little cog on the right here, I actually get some options. So I can stack this on mobile. You can see here we've got a column on the left, text on the right. If I go to preview on mobile, you'll see the images on top with the text underneath. So those columns are actually going to be stacked when they're sort of too narrow to be left as two columns side by side. So that's a pretty handy feature if you're looking to take more control of your text. Now I'm gonna preview this in a new tab and you can see here things are a little bit more spaced where we haven't got the text wrapping around on this side. We've got a little bit more control, but we're still not quite getting the effect we want. But um, you sort of get the idea. What I can do is I'm gonna come back to this and we're gonna address that soon. For now, I'm gonna close that off that tab with the preview. And this time I'm gonna just get rid of this whole section by clicking on it, hitting delete. And now we have these this section here. So I'm gonna add in another set of columns. And this time I'm gonna go with three columns. However, just to be different, we're gonna choose we can choose three even columns or something that's a bit more different, such as two thin columns on the outside, a thick column on the inside. So I can actually grab this image, pop it in the center, grab this text, pop it on the left, grab this text and pop it on, if I head up, the right. Now you see there's a big disparity between the actual sizes. What I can do is I can even just decide, okay, I'm gonna move the image to the first column and move this text to the center column. I can move things around pretty easily. But also, I'm not quite happy with the widths because even though I don't want it to be even, there's just too much in the middle. So what I can do is click on a column. So I click on this area here, maybe the text, and click underneath to select the column. And the column itself is a width of 25%. I can actually change that to about 20%. I can then click on the image underneath that. And instead of 50%, I can say 40%. 
which means if I've had 20% and 40%, I can actually have another 40% over here. So I click on this text, I go right to the bottom and click underneath, or I can click the text and then click the column and make that 40%. So now we have two 40% columns and one 20% column, which looks like this. And things are a little bit more evenly spaced. So we can take control of that. But then also if we go to say a phone width, it stacks these a bit more. So I've zoomed in so it looks like a phone and it still stacks them and makes it more viewable if you're on a smaller device, which is pretty cool. So I switch, close that tab. So that's a simple way you can take control of those columns. And of course, within those columns, I can actually change things like, you know, the content width, I can make it 20 pixels or 200 pixels. And I actually set the width of the content within those columns to take better control of that layout. And uh, same with if I change the settings. So if this image is set to center, if I decide I wanna set it to none, I've also got under none to 60 or wide, I should say. So you've got a few options there to play with that layout, which is pretty cool. And then of course, under the column itself, we can have the background be pink, and then we can just have everything in one pink area. One thing that might be that is pretty handy is the fact that sometimes when you create text blocks with backgrounds, it tends to separate the blocks with a space. With this, you can just have all the text in one solid background color. So if I click on this here and make the background color orange and the text yellow, everything in it is pretty much consistent regardless. So you've got some options there for styling. This looks pretty ugly, but you sort of get the idea. Now, if you wanted to still have your two at the start, I'm gonna actually go here and I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna type in media and text. So you can actually have a designated media and text box. So if I go here to media library and add an image, choose this, this one here. I can start typing in my content text or I can once again, grab this block, move it in and grab this block and move it in also. And I'm gonna just shut this off and zoom out. So you can actually have a dedicated, so it's kind of like two columns, but it behaves slightly differently. You can uh, align top, middle, bottom. So if you line the image on the bottom, line the image at the top, I can change the image to the right instead of the left. Uh, so you got some ideas. You can also change some settings here, like the, make the image full width, change the width of the image around. And if you ever want to replace the image, you can just replace it. And it's very easy to change that width around here. It's a little bit more accessible and easier to use if you're looking to do that. So that is straight away, first of all, something that we've been able to do there. Another thing we can also do is we can take this same information I highlight it all, I right click to copy. And as long as I have an empty block to actually go into, if not, just hit enter after some text. You can hit control V to paste everything in, although it's added it into <laughs> a column. So we'll just get rid of that. We'll go down the bottom here. And add that in. So now we've got this information here. We're gonna get rid of this uh, this section here. So we've got some information here. And again, if I select this, open up my section there, I can go to background, make the background yellow, and you can see how it's actually affected everything. So instead of me just simply making the background of this gray, and then the next one gray, I've selected the two blocks at once to introduce a background color. So we're gonna preview and show you how everything looks and get a bit more of an idea of what we've been doing. So you can see here, we've got our three columns with our background colors. We've got our information on the left, image on the right. And now we've actually got a bit of an issue where this hasn't followed through. This can't win them all. However, it has joined these two together, which is pretty cool. So even though it appears different on the edit, it's always good to actually preview and check these things out. I didn't realize it was gonna do that, but you sort of get the idea. It's still a pretty powerful uh, way of checking things out. Now, a few other items, which if I clear this page, 
there's a few, if I go to browse all, we can actually view everything we have available to us in the block editor. Now there's some pretty basic stuff in here. I'm not gonna go through all of it, but one thing that is very cool is things like the cover. I can actually add a cover in here, choose a background image, such as this again. And I can write in, I can actually set a bunch of blocks inside this. So I can say, go jump. And then I can continue to add info and I can still hit my plus symbol and add in other blocks like other images. So actually by using a cover can create a cool background that allows me to insert other things and I can shrink that down within an image area. And if I click on that block, I have other options here. For example, I can toggle the full height so it's a full height or not. So if I go full height, we'll leave that on. I can center or I can right align, center, left, and move things around within that block depending on where I want to put it. And of course, I can change the alignment of this as well. I can align it to the right. If I want to have it to the right of some text, it'll act like an image and sit to the right. So if I actually go and copy and paste some lorem ipsum in here and move this up, you can see how it's aligned to the right. But for now, we're actually going to make it no alignment, so it's in there. The other thing too is once I've selected this block, there's a few other things. I can add these cool duotone effects. So you can get some pretty cool effects and that makes it a bit easier to read. And those are all there. You can also create your own custom effects, I believe, by choosing different colors in here. So the highlights, I can make more of a, a peachy sort of color. And so you actually have so much control over how this looks. And I'm actually going to just clear this because if I click on this and bring up my sidebar, I have this image here. I can also move the image around, the position of the image within the space. I can fix the background. So as I scroll, the background stays in place or I can repeat it. If I have a small image, it will tile and repeat. So you've got so many options to really take control of the look of this particular section of your page. And you can even add in opacity. So if I have an overlay at the moment, it's just defaulted to black maybe I would decide I want to make it blue and I can change the opacity of that section and add a minimum height. So if I want to make sure it's at least 90 variable height, I can do that. So that's another very cool visual section, which once you combine with columns, you can get a pretty cool effect, which we'll just quickly preview. So how do we actually put this all into practice? Let's clear it and we're going to quick, I'm going to quickly zoom ahead and we're going to put a whole bunch of information into this so you can see the kind of effects that you can actually get while using this, uh, using these uh, principles. So I'm using the same modules here as we've just covered to create a much nicer looking page. Now, one thing I'm gonna cover quickly also is buttons. If I add a block and type in button, I can actually add in buttons onto my page. And again, I can change the alignment top, I can make it left aligned, right aligned, that's kind of thing. Well, that's actually uh, a pretty handy sort of thing to play with. Having buttons on your page is a great way to sort of further customize and get better call to actions. So I'm gonna say, and now let's preview our page. So you can see, we've got this nice layout with a few different columns nice black section in there and a call to action. Our button's sitting off to the right because I aligned it that way. So if we tab back, click back on that button, align item center, update. You can see how visual our page gets, but it's just a little bit jam packed. There's not, not, not really a lot of great spacing. So I have another quick few tips to add in here, which might help. One thing I could do is if I have this here, I can add in what's called a separator, which is simply a line. I can make that line green, or especially here where things are a little bit jam packed and tight. I can add in, I'm gonna add it in underneath and then move it. I'm gonna go enter. Now, sometimes you can't get in places, it's best to add them somewhere and then move them around. I'm going to add a spacer. So if I click here, I simply hit delete. 
actually going to hit enter here, add a spacer. I can, I can make that whatever size I want, move it up. And then I'm going to duplicate this block, move it down underneath, duplicate it again, move it down. And I can add in deliberate space in between some of these sections. And I've added a line in here and I'll add one more of these down here and update. Now everything's got a little bit more space, a little bit more open. We've got a nice little divider line in here. So you can add in such as, I didn't add one down here, but you can add spaces and dividing lines in to further break up your page and get much better looking pages in WordPress. So that's the video for today. Pretty straightforward, but uh, something I think a lot of people don't realize is actually quite powerful. And like I said, if I zoom in as if I'm going to be on a phone, it will actually stack this stuff so it reads better in a single column. So it's actually a responsive process as well. And you can see the results. So if you've got more coming in this, uh, in this series of videos so check out the videos on the screen i'm going to pop up in a minute otherwise thanks for watching the video i hope you learned something from it have a great day and talk to you again soon